Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they be. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Christine Corr. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I've also created a transformational journey to help you on your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Christine Kaur, who's coming all the way from Egypt. So if we fade out or we go a little bit blurry, just hang with us because the wonders of technology will be working and I'm sure the angels will be keeping an eye to make sure everything stays, um, stays focused. And Christine will be sharing the revelations of Archangel Metatron and how they can help you with the understanding of where your self-reproach, self-criticism, feeling of unworthiness may come from and how you really are your own divine being in complete control of your life and fully connected to the universal wisdom. Now, these insights may seem quite radical, but they come with unconditional love of the angelic realms. Now, Christine is the co-founder of Angelic Reiki with her late husband, Kevin. And since his passing has taken Angelic Reiki further along its path to where there are teachers and practitioners in many countries. She's still actively running workshops around the world and bringing this wonderful healing to many people. And from the base of Angelic Reiki, different insights have led to new teachings and workshops, including the Golden Heart Merkaba of Creation, New Sembrala, and most recently, the Wisdom of Metatron. And it's through this new workshop that Archangel Metatron has given Christine some recent insights, which she'll be sharing today. She is the author of the book, Angelic Reiki, which this spring sees two launches of the book in Mexico for the Spanish translation and the other in Portugal for the Portuguese translation. Now, it is a brilliant read that explains Angelic Reiki and its foundings on a deeper, more insightful way. Christine is very supportive of all those who not only practice but teach Angelic Reiki and is more than happy to give assistance or guidance when asked. So without further ado, hello, Christine, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, hello, I'm fine. Yes, in nice warm sunshine, thank you. <laughs> so before we get into this fascinating conversation, then please hit the like love button and please say hello to Let Us Know Is Here. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all recordings. You can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Christine and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. And I can see that some people are saying hello already. Um, if we can't get to everyone during the show, then we will at the end um, go back and answer any comments or, or questions. So um, just show some people who are saying hello so far. So let's have a look. Hannah's here. Hello, Hannah. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. <laughs> Up in Yorkshire, hey. hey. Also, Amanda's Hi. here as well. Hello, oh, hello, Amanda. Hi. And Sorry, we, it's my fan club. It is. And we have Son as well. Hi, Son. Um, and down here we have Jenna May. Hello, Jenna May. Hi, Jenna. Hello. And I can't actually go down to see any more at the moment. So, um, have to come out of that because that's playing up. Um, anyway, so um, Christine, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how these revelations of Archangel Metatron can help with being making people the best and confident in their own divine way? Right, okay. <laughs> um, so, yes, a bit about myself. Uh, you asked at uh, first and uh, when we we're talking in the introduction we kind of said that it'd be really nice to uh, share something about um yeah my life with kevin and uh you know and kevin and uh, uh ah linda that's uh, that's from uh linda is in the north of spain 
So hi, Spain. <laughs> hey, we've got Spain coming in. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And why? But yeah, just as that comes in, I want to actually say and acknowledge um, the help that uh, we're given. And um, both Hannah uh, and Amanda um, do give a lot of time and a lot of support. And there's people, there's unsung heroes around the world that uh, give Angelic Reiki um, a lot of time and energy and support. So I want this to be a, um, an acknowledgement and thank you uh, to them. And I hope on the new website there will be um, you know, further acknowledged. Okay, sorry, back to the question. Yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's interesting being here in Egypt because, of course, Egypt was a big part of the story uh, for Kevin and I. Um, it's, uh, you know, somebody today asked me, how did I come to live in Egypt? And it was through teaching Angelic Reiki in Greece. Uh, Kevin and I visited the Parthenon. At the bottom of the Parthenon was this um, little church, just this very tiny church. And it had um, a, um, a mosaic on the floor, obviously sacred patterns and uh and that just triggered an, an aware just something in kevin that recognized within um the mosaic how that in this church how that represents sacred design and and of course egypt as well as uh, greece and so many places around the world all sacred places they're built on this sacred design and this is an expression of Metatron. So anyway, coming back to uh, our story, um, yeah, so Ke Kevin and I first met because um, I had um, uh, issues with um, uh, my computer and connecting to um, um, emails and things. But this was in 92, oh no, perhaps 94. So it was in the very, very early days. And it was just an incredible mystery. But Kevin had done... Uh, some computer work because he was um um you know from from his job um and uh and so he yeah, so i had some uh, idea about computers back in those early early days and uh so th somebody that because i was a, a homeopath at that time a full-time uh, practice and i ran a healing center and the guy that uh, did massage said oh i know a spiritual guy that can help you with compute you know my computer needed only to have a spiritual guy <laughs> attend to it of course um and so this guy rolled up and uh and yeah did what needed to be done and found out that he did healing so i said you know well you know um why not join us here at uh, the uh, healing center uh, so he did <laughs> And just started a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like office romances. <laughs> well, I suppose you could put it in that, but it wasn't at that time, you see, at all. Um, yeah, no, it, 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 no, that wasn't until um, I left because I um, I actually sold that. I, I did. I had it for ten years, and then it just felt well nine years, nine and a half years, and I do cycles of nine. Uh, so it just naturally, automatically seemed to come to a conclusion after that in the, in 2001. And um, I just had this impulse to go traveling. It's, it's like I'd no reason why not. So why not just pack a bag and, you know, and travel, uh, which I did for 15 months. And the, um, yeah, it's like who on the earth is in charge? So I said goodbye. I wasn't in touch with anybody particularly at all. Um, and I went to New Zealand and then just went, you know, just travelled. And um, Kevin, uh, during this time, is actually writing the um, Angelic Reiki manuals. And he gets, he teaches, he teaches in Bradford, the great Bradford, okay, uh, the world renowned. And also teach, taught in the Midlands and then gets an invitation to teach in Kuala Lumpur exactly when I am traveling through Malaysia. Ah. And so that was that was the beginning of the, that was the beginning of the beginning. Yeah, that's yeah. when we actually, you know, I got into a relationship. Um, I then had a workshop in Japan. Um, so I went and did that and then came home to. Yeah. <laughs> 
and then we start and then we right from then uh, Kevin had done one or two workshops but he'd not done a master the masters so we taught the first masters together that November November of 2003 wow yeah and then yeah. just taught and uh, developed the workshops and that was you see what was really special and familiar enough um football um fanatics will understand that if you have a common interest with your partner your whole life is that yeah you know so and that that was that was true you know for kevin and i uh that uh, the workshops and talking about um yeah just new ideas and deeper insights was a, was you know the the breakfast time conversation just like liverpool winning or something yeah. like that, you know um, <laughs> Yeah. A much more interesting yeah. conversation than football. <laughs> yes, rather, rather. But you know what I mean? How something just is your life. And yeah. that's how it was. Um, we, neither of us had another, you know, we're in fourth position, neither of us had um, another job. Uh, and our time was just totally devoted. And we did. Um, we, uh, whatever, whether it was the Angelic Reiki or the Merkaba and then later the Shambhala, we, um, um, we didn't take anything for granted and we didn't take anything that we were told. We actually went away for weekends with other uh, people um, with their own level of expertise in different areas and brainstormed concepts uh, to get just to really, really make the, uh, our, our own. Um, and Kevin had studied a great deal uh, as mm. well before, before then. Um, and so yeah it really was total immersion in what we did which meant that we um yeah so we really just worked at um at really getting deeper and deeper and it's still going and it's yeah <laughs> yeah and so, 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 so is, how did you, how did you both end up in egypt uh, okay so we stood in this um um church little lovely church at the bottom of the parthenon with its beautiful mosaic floor which is we recognize sacred geometry the pattern you know the patterning yeah. of it um and kevin looks at it and says i want to go to egypt no. um but okay. when i was, uh, as you do um but when i was traveling as i said the first place i went to um was new zealand and one of the first not the first but one of the people i met quite early on um in a little seaside village uh was a woman called julie and there with her was her egyptian husband uh they gone they gone she taken him back to uh, new zealand and so i met yosef um and her main home was already uh in luxor so when kevin and i visited um, we went obviously Cairo. We didn't know yeah. Egypt at all, so you're flying to Cairo. So I kind of said, "Oh, well, I'll, I'll just ring Julie, see if she's in Egypt," and she was. And she said, "Okay, um, the train leaves at such and such a time. You can get to the station by doing this, this, and this. I'll meet you on the platform. I'll book your hotel. See you tomorrow morning." <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So uh, we went up to Luxor. Um, and um, I was, yeah, I, we went obviously to visit some of the uh, temples. And I remember, um, it, you know, it was quite hot and kind of relaxed and have a little bit of a sleep in the afternoon. And when I laid down, um, it was just like a holographic download, just all the um, hieroglyphs were just kind of coming in. <laughs> you know, it was you know, quite, yeah, it was quite, quite interesting. Um, and so that was obviously a very energetic connection mm. uh, to Egypt. And as we looked around, we realized it was the perfect place to teach the Merkaba because that's about, that is sacred geometry. Yeah. Um, and, and how, and again, very totally, uh, is so essential as a link in uh, to the Metatron, wisdom of Metatron stuff. So when we went back to teach that, we were both stood on the balcony overlooking the Nile looking at the palm trees and the desert and the Valley of the Kings and kind of said, I think we could live here. <laughs> so, so, so by, yeah, that was in May. 
um, by end of August, um, uh, we'd committed, uh, well, we first rented a place actually, but we'd committed to being here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely amazing. You, you know, it, it's wonderful when people just kind of like they go somewhere and it's like, do you know something? This is where I'm meant to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just, um, yeah, it's like it's not even a decision. Mm. It, it's just, it's just happening. You know, like life is just, life is just happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, and then um, after um, Kev Kevin passed, you came back to England, and that I you, stayed, you kind of left Egypt, right? So I actually stayed here for two and a half years after Kevin died, um, and that was a very, a very um, interesting time. It was a very, very profound and deep time for me um, because um, where I was was separate. Um, you know, geographically, it was separate from other foreigners. Um, so I, except for teaching, I actually spent about two and a half years alone and in silence um, and just processing. And uh, yes, I'd, I'd talk occasionally um, in the early days of Skype, obviously, so I could connect with people uh, to some extent. Uh, but it was a personally very deep time. Um, and then um, in the summer, and I was here, of course, during the Arab Spring, um, which is that that is interesting to go through that experience with with a country, and mm. just see how um, deep how deeply something like you know you hear about a revolution, yeah, uh, on, you know, on the news, uh, but to actually be with the local people and just see the shock of your country just falling apart yeah uh, because Mubarak M Mubarak had been a dictator and in some extent an okay dictator uh, for 34 years mm. so half the population knew nothing else um so it was yeah very very uh, a great shock um it just just resonated through the land it was yeah. uh, so that was um, that was um June sorry that was January of uh, 2011 um, so 2012, I came back uh, to the UK because it, it was where I needed to be and with my yeah. family, et cetera, et cetera. And then I've come back to Egypt for longer and yeah. longer times. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it's a very, it's a very inspirational um, and dynamic energy here. It yeah. is. So the, so the wisdom of um, Metatron, um, which, which obviously is, is something fairly new, newish yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So was does that sort of like really manifested itself whilst you've been in Egypt or were the seeds formed before yeah. you went back to Egypt so um for um although we you so how it usually unfolds is that somebody will hear about angelic reiki and do an angelic reiki workshop be interested in all the rest of it and then perhaps do the Merkaba the Nart Merkaba or Shambhala afterwards uh, but actually, everything came to Kevin and I in the reverse order. Um, I started working with Shambhala energy in, two, in 92, 93. Um, and, uh, and then um, I, oh, and I th virtually, yes, uh, only months after I started working with Shambhala energy, um, I connected to uh, Merkaba work um, and then shared that with when Kevin came to the uh, clinic, I shared that with him. And it was only out of those two, that is the foundation of angelic Reiki. So you've got the unconditional love of Shambhala and the metatronic laws of, uh, of sacred geometry. And they are the foundations. And then, of course, when uh, uh, angelic Reiki uh, was born, um, it was, uh, you know, said, as, it, as was true, that this, this, obeyed the laws, obeyed the nature, was uh, an expression of Metatron. Um, and ever since, yes, I think, I think it was, well, Kevin and I talked about it, uh, but it became stronger and stronger realisation for me that actually, you know, how, how can you understand angelic Reiki? How can one be involved with angelic Reiki? If, if one doesn't 
have a deep understanding of Metatron because this is, you know, it, that for a teacher, you know, uh, you know, for someone to come from um, uh, teaching, um, if this is Metatron, if this is Metatronic, if this is an expression of the essence of Metatron, Metatron principles brought this, etc. We need to know Metatron, and mm. the only workshop that really demonstrated and got to the bottom you know really went through all the principles of of um of defining metatron was the um, was the golden heart merkaba which was a seven day workshop and it, and it's so um and that that seemed inappropriate to expect um, master teachers to then go you know they, oh and now you've got another seven days to do and another yeah. you know and that that it's like no that that's that's not that you know that's not okay kind of thing so i have been um uh from that seed of knowing it has taken years to actually allow that um what how this could be taught um uh, and it's very different to the merkaba workshop so how can all of that be condensed? How can all of that be communicated um, in as in a easily accessible, light, fun two-day workshop? And um, it's it's taken from um, first realizing its need uh, through June uh, 2018 that to be birthed. Um, and, and so it has taken you know a lot of lot yeah. of coming together, and it's kind of nearly been there, and then there's been needed other pieces, and then it's been nearly nearly there, and it's been a long long journey. Um, but it's um, just writing it, putting the um, uh, the workbook together, and researching some of the stuff behind it um, is yeah, it, it's been quite. It, it's uh, for two days, and and just for the message, the, the profundity of what's been said, it is it just blows it blows me away. It really, really does. And to bring give you some sense of that, um, uh, uh, we tried showing <laughs> this everybody. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that has always um, that I've has puzzled me. And, and nobody had the answer and it seemed i don't know it just seemed unfair um that most angel cards angel pictures were kind of kind of like that you know with a, a with wings and a body mm. and all the rest of it and then um there started to be um these geometries you want to move I, over to your that right way. That's it, perfect. <laughs> and then move, move, yeah, move up slightly. Up a bit, down a bit. Yeah, no, but you can see up a bit. You can see the geometry there. Oh, great. Okay. So when I first saw this, it was like, I don't get this. Why? And and also something that I've noticed is that if, on YouTube, there's a lot of um, um, music for various purposes. Uh, the uh, 432. Um, kilohertz mm. resonance of music, etc., and the majority of that, uh, as a YouTube presentation, has the graphics as sacred geometry. You know, as, as similar patterns to that, and it's like, why? And what's the connection between our usual picture of a, a, a of a, a, a body, a, a human body with wings, um, you know, beautiful, etc., etc., and um, a geometric design? How can both of those be, um, you know, and when and researching this, what I realized was is that one represents the journey and the other represents the absolute. So, um, as, as you, you know, as you say in a lot of your previous presenters have uh, kind of emphasized and, you know, and we talk about, the, the, the journey and the support on the journey and the healing we do and they um, all all these modalities that help that where we're working with the journey but that is that is that's only um, half half the story in um, in the most 
um, ancient um, principles, ancient philosophies, excuse me a minute. Yeah. Um, two things are acknowledged. One is your divine now. No story, no discussion, nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the other is we we need to, we need to improve. We need to. I need to go get my depression seen. To I need to go get you know da 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 da, and yeah. Um, so I started to realise that the geometry was the abs This is the divine, and there is no exception to that. So there is no journey. But we've got to get it, and and we and my personal experiences, and I think so many people experience this that in certain times we can kind of sit with ourselves. We might be feeling happy, we might be feeling sad, we might be feeling angry, we might be feeling all sorts of things. But sometimes <clears throat> there's a time when we can be with ourselves. We understand why, you know, somebody's just died. You know, it isn't the time to get over grief. It isn't, you know, it's the time to allow whatever is there to be there. So there are these times when we can, we can be unconditionally with ourselves. And then we so easily go into, oh, but I've got to get rid of this and I've got to improve that and all the rest of it. All right. Um, and when I was doing the research, um, I, it was just something that I, I came across and it was like, I don't know, just, oh my. Um, in our human history is not what's in the books. It's not what we're taught at school and it's not, it's not what's in the libraries. And there is more and more information coming out as to, you know, just how um, how, how, how mysterious the true history of humans is. And I'm not just talking about thousands and thousands of years and where did we come from and all that kind of thing. I'm talking about even recent times uh, with recent discoveries of what might have happened over the last 200 years where history is not what it seems. But one thing we do know, and that is history, not only is history written by the victors, that the victors are the ones who have had the power, the money. It comes, you know, so power uh, it has, has come through uh, religion um, and, yes, and armies uh, you know, uh, and, and money. That is, and, and, and politics and political decisions. That is how somebody keeps power. And we, you know, <laughs> um, can we see it today? I'm not, you know, not, not going there. <laughs> no, we won't, we, we won't, we won't do it, we won't do it now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, say no more. Um, but nothing's, in a way, nothing's changed. And what we've got to understand is that that, that has always been the case. So it was a very powerful um organization movement whatever uh whatever we want to call it uh called the roman empire and um not only uh was the uh was the meeting in nicaea uh where um decisions were made political decisions were made so that constantine the great um could retain his place um, you know, uh, at the head of the uh, Roman Empire, you know, he had a problem uh, that part of the uh, uh, the population uh, were pagan and part of the population were becoming Christian. How do I keep both of these happy? Well, you know, I, I <laughs> and you know, you, bring, you do political manoeuvring and have a bit of this and a bit of that and mix them together and hopefully everybody will vote for you. Yeah. Um, and you know that that story is in the angelic reiki manual because it it it, it was the time when um 
it was decreed which angels were acceptable yeah. as a political decision. And it's, you know, um, but then something I didn't know until I started looking at this was that about 90 years after that, so this is in the early 400 AD's, there was another big, um, you know, another big meeting. And um, so to back, so just to backtrack uh, a minute, one of the great powers at that time uh, was Augustine, yeah. or what we know of as uh, Saint Augustus. Now, Augustine, um, he had, I guess he was a big, um, charismatic, powerful communicator, you know, etc. And of course, the Roman Empire were very powerful in Northern Africa. And he really, uh, he was like the religious head, in a way, of, that, uh, of Northern Africa. And um, he, his, his belief was, abs his belief absolutely was that there was uh, two people that started the human race, Adam and Eve, very literally, and that they betrayed the divine, they sinned, they were bad, they, um, you know, etc. And because we were their descendants, we were by definition bad. And this is where, you know, you've got to suffer to, for atonement, uh, you've got to improve, etc. Came from his personal opinion that we were contaminated by the sins of Adam and Eve. Okay, that might be true, might be, you know, whatever. So that's that part of the story. There was another um, uh, guy called Agius. That was his name when he got to Rome. But he was actually um, a, a druid, um, a, a pagan, in in, um, in Ireland, and he'd grown up, um, you know, in the druid movement of that time um, in Ireland. So very much honouring nature, very much seeing the divine in everything, um, honour honouring the seasons, honour you know, honouring. Yeah, well, can't say any more, can I? Just honouring, living yeah. with, in harmony with, balance with nature, and um, and in that finding the divine in everything, which is a little bit opposite to mm. um, the Augustinian philosophy. Yeah. Um. So there was a um a, a synod. Um, now, for some bizarre reason, which I can't quite track down, poor old Pelagius got delayed on his journey to that. I like your expression there. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's all there. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Um, and the, um, uh, what Augustine preached was accepted as Roman um law what the, and uh pelagius um was you know, was uh, you know um, dismissed um as a um heretic yeah um and that is it's unbelievable you know um that the political power the opinion of one man became the doctrine of not Christianity, of not, you know, because, um, yeah, the, 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 the true goodness for me is is natural human way. Yeah. You don't have to learn to be it. But yet, um, yeah, that would, and it's, it's just, and it's all around the world. It's always this attitude, um, this perception, this I'm not good enough. Um, as another story, which I think is uh, really points to this. It's, it's yeah, again, it just hit, hits me as like, um, 
there's a, Jack, a guy called Jack Cornfield, and he's um, uh, he's one of the guys uh, that has been credited with getting mindfulness out beyond Buddhism out into the public. Um, uh, he is he is a Buddhist, but he is a a, a psychotherapist as well. Yeah. I think it's a psychotherapist first, and then um, I, I'm not, I'm, that might not be true. Uh, but he's a a, a really he's sincere. He's guy. Guy. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So he understood how just we need to, we need to be aware of what the mind is doing and not just respond. You know, action, reaction, chaos, everything driven by our emotions. And how when uh, anybody, without any being a member of being a Buddhist, being in anything, can just come to that place where we can not live driven by what the mind thinks, but yeah, go, all oh, right, I'm doing hmm. that pattern again, you know, etc. And how much mindfulness has, uh, has, has spread. And, you know, it's hmm. um, there are classes uh, for in, in businesses to support how an, off, an office can run harmoniously and the better productivity. And, you know, it's, it's just really uh, spread uh, and have been, uh, you know, into many, many places. Anyway, so... Um, and he is going. He is going to be looked back on. I think of one of the uh, modern day philosophers, actually, that really changed yeah. things at this time. Um, you know, in the world, kind of thing. So, Jack, and this is this story. Um, uh, I've seen Jack tell this story. So, yes, I'm giving it second hand, but it's only yeah. second hand. He hasn't kind of come down lots and lots of things. No. This is the story as he tells it, as close as I can. Um, so, you know, the Dalai Lama, he travels a lot and he yeah. you know, visit, often visits the United States, etc. And he had, um, uh, so Jack Cornfield had an audience uh, with the Dalai Lama and the Dalai Lama was very much aware of the work that Jack was doing in terms of um, bringing mindfulness practice just out, just out there into the world. So... Um, as part of the conversation, the Dalai Lama says to uh, Jack Cornfield, so tell me, how is the mindfulness mo movement going? And Jack answers, it, 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 thank you, it's going, it's going really well. It's being picked up by lots of people. And he seems to, yeah, very, very happy with how well it is at being picked up. He said, but there's one problem, you know, for us, and it's self-reproach. And the silence. And the Dalai Lama looks at the group of people that he always travels with and they mutter amongst themselves. And then finally, the Dalai Lama says, pardon? He said, it's just this depth of self-reproach uh, that Westerners have. And he says, I'm sorry, we don't, we, don't, we don't understand. We do not have a word for that. It's not normal. To have this opinion that we're not good enough is not normal. Yeah. But this is difficult because that begs the question, how can we sit with and be with the times when we, for whatever reason, feel we're not good enough? without having desire to be different? And the answer is a word that's banded around everywhere but not often really sat with, and it's unconditional love. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, is, that is one of the hardest things that, that, that people do, yeah. that, yeah. that they, they do have. You know, they they think, oh, this this is love, but unconditional love is is different to to love. It is it's different. It is. To love. It, it is. It, it's really hard to explain unless you kind it of is. like. It, it is. Yeah, it reminds me of when I was teaching um, in Indonesia. <laughs> I, I I'd been asked to go out to this monastery, uh, the deep in deep in the uh, jungle, um, and uh, somehow heard I was coming. I don't know. And this nun had asked me to do a healing for her. 
And then after that, they asked me to do an attunement for the local tribe, which was, <laughs> which was amazing, amazing. Uh, so um, but the reason that I'm coming to this is that I talked about love and they said, but which word do you want us to use? It's like, it's like the Eskimos in the snow. Mm. And we decided to use the word that they used when they loved a child. Because it's the it, that was the nearest word in their language that we could use for unconditional love. Because the mm. rest didn't mean that at all. But we just have this one word mm. that, you know, and it's, yeah. But a friend of mine, in fact, John Armitage, that uh, was, you know, the founder of, uh, excuse me, the first bringer of um, um, Shambhala, grounding of Shambhala energy here back in the early 90s, um, he's changed it round and, and, it, and it works to some extent. It gets mm. there better. And that is love without conditions. Jim. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah that, that probably makes it more understandable for... It gets there a bit better. Yeah. It, it gets in there better, doesn't it? Yeah, when, yeah. If, if it's... Love, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, a way that I sometimes try and just communicate something of that um, uh, in, a, in a workshop, I don't know whether you've heard me tell uh, tell this story or not. Um, so um, what would it be like to have a child who, um, or late, late teens, early 20s, that is really having a tough time, they've perhaps got into drugs, they've perhaps got into whatever, and unconditional love means you're totally there for them without any judgment and you don't want it to be different. Mm. You know, it's like when we ask very, very simple questions, when we're happy, we believe that we're connected to the divine and this is our soul expression and all the rest of it. So does the soul forget? Did it get it wrong when it's a hard time? And it's that thing, you know, um, you might, you know, where were you when I needed you? I was carrying you. Yeah. And, and that is what we can have for ourselves. And the magical thing about the, um, uh, the Wisdom of Metatron workshop and working with the sacred geometry versus um, the, um, the other way of expressing an angel, the journey versus the divine now, it, that, it's just like, um, it kind of proves it. It just, you know, through experience, through, um, yeah, just all the parts that come together uh, in that. It, it, it's, it's like this is, we, we mathematically demonstrate this. It's known, it's felt, it's experienced. And it's like, you know, that. So when we do an angelic Reiki healing, what, what happens is because I, as the healer, I'm not hoping for anything, and I, as a healer, I don't like the yeah. word. I'm doing it. No, anything. I, I, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, 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 if yeah, it's yeah. one of those words, it's really difficult not to use the word. Here. I know. Yeah, it is. It is. What we're actually doing, what I want to suggest is, that, and this, yeah, and this is just, I'm just pointing at something, okay? I don't totally mean this. I'm pointing at something. What if Angelic Reiki isn't about healing? It's about remembering and just an invitation. So it, it's, it's a, yes, it can be about the journey, but it's all about also about the invitation to remember now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure I can really feel that, the, that you know, and I can really sense um that there, you know um that there are times when things are really really hard and mm. um and i very much and i think so many uh, you know yourself I, I don't know personally you know for yourself but just to say generally so many people that put themselves in position as healers are actually coming from the 
archetype of the wounded healer. We've been yeah. there. We've been there. All right. And that's the place that we can really be, you know, so so my when I'm um if I'm having a personal session, my affirmation for me is to whatever's going on for that person to um to be willing to totally join them there without without anything just un unconditionally hold that mm. yeah and and I, I think the more that people um they they work with angelic reiki and with um connect with metatron etc they kind of like be become that that sort of like energy to help people remember yeah yeah they're, they're their own rather than I'm I'm telling you this is what you're going to remember I'm projecting yeah. what yeah, yeah. What, yeah. What, yeah. What, what what this what yeah. this is yeah it really yeah. isn't I've got something and I can give you something so you can be something else it's like we're here now what about being with whatever is there yeah lovingly Lovingly. And you know what? They've actually, uh, I love this, they've actually um, discovered in the United States, there's obviously a lot of uh, soldiers been coming back, um, you know, uh, from Afghanistan, from et cetera, et cetera. So there's been a lot of work done on post-traumatic stress mm. uh, and, um, and, sorry, something's just come up on my screen. And it's, yes, getting a bit um and so there's been a philosophy and yeah i scream when i hear this this idea i've got to let go of something mm. i'm going to say sorry no got to be with something and they've actually they they the site um the psychotherapeutic uh, research they've done in the united states shows that if the process of dealing with post-traumatic stress syndrome is to allow the soldier to um uh, to let go of the trauma it does it comes back it's not sustainable if they create a place where they can uh, create some um framework where that person can be with the trauma it dissolves yeah so you know, my invitation to anyone everyone that's listening is don't you know um be willing have the courage to be with everything mm. lovingly without judgment without trying to be better and what's also fascinating is that this idea of getting it now without the journey there's all sorts of names like realization enlightenment etc and this through again certain work that people are made i know of are happening in america i would suggest that there are as many if not more people waking up that are in prison than are out of prison yeah the message is you do not have to be good to be enlightened nah. you just got to be in love so stop trying to improve. <laughs> it, it's exactly it, it's it's been it been accepting who you are and you know what's gone on in in your life etc and go that that's that's part of me. Exactly, exactly, and this this goes to the root also of Jungian psychology. He said we are all of these, you know, all of the things, all of the archetypes. Um, we all have potential for all of it. So, and the only place to be is in in grace with it all. Yeah. So, um, with sort of like times, times getting on, we are going to have to come back and have another <laughs> and have and, and do this again. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that because this is this is this is this is so fascinating um but uh, some of the um comments or questions that have have come in um i mean linda dawn bryant um I, this goes back to when uh 
talking about you and Kevin. And um, basically, um, she asked, how long were you two together? Not long enough. <laughs> Decidedly not long enough. So, um, um, actually, uh, as a couple in relationship, um, ooh, um, from 2003, um, the end of 2003, to when he died in uh, June 2009. Yeah. But, I mean, I knew him. Um, we, we both, you know, worked together in the clinics from, um, I think he came in about uh, 96, 97. Yeah, so I knew him for that one. Yeah. Yeah, very uh, short, really. We didn't feel, yeah. you know, when I look at everything, the stuff we did, the places we went, da, 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 it wasn't really a short time. No, no. And he's, and he's still with you anyway, so. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's really funny. I went to see a guy. <laughs> Here, that has a car parts shop, all right, you know, for the, yeah, for, uh, and uh, any part you want for any car, he, he can sell it to you. And he became quite friendly with Kevin. And uh, so I went, I went to see him in his shop, and uh, Mohammed is called. And uh, and it just all of a sudden, I said to him, Oh, Kevin says hello. <laughs> and he really was terribly present, you know, it was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. probably wants to say a part for Persia or something. <laughs> yeah, so, so, something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we had Hannah who said, the wisdom of Metatron makes perfect, perfect sense as a workshop. Wonderful to be able to simplify and condense the Merkaba work in, work in this way. And which, 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 is, um, which, which is pretty cool for those that can't do the sort of like seven days. Oh, yes, yes. And it isn't. I also don't want to communicate it's it's an either or or no. that something isn't that the two days is not as good as the seven days. They're they they're different yeah, they're different things for different reasons. And exactly. Both, and yeah, yeah. and they'll appeal to different people as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody yeah. you don't anybody you don't have you know they don't have to do an angelic reiki or anything. Uh, a welcome, you know, to the wisdom uh, yeah. workshop. Yeah. Um, and Jenna May said, my goodness, I've been thinking about this remembering idea lately. Cool. So <laughs> she's she's picked up on the remembering rather than the healing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that. And yeah. Patrick Michael Melsop says, yes, empathy. Mm -hmm. um, and... Hannah again says, "Being present and being love, absolutely. Present is is the um, is the absolute must." Um, and she also says, "All is lovable," and I quite agree with that. Everything <laughs> is lovable. Yeah, no, this, is, this is what we've got to make possible, and yeah. and we as humans uh, really can come up with reasons why we shouldn't. You know, do I reach? Could should I really love that? You know, um, yeah. So it's it's. Um, it's it's a challenge. It and, is, but it is the truth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. Linda Dawn has says everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and San says thank you to both to you both. Thank you, San, for watching oh, and, take, and taking the time to 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 reply on this. Um, uh, Linda here's with all of us. I think she's talking about Kevin. I think. <laughs> um, That's the good thing about being dead. You can be everywhere without trying. Exactly. I know it's amazing. <laughs> um, and uh, she also says, um, "I felt this many a time." Okay, but I'm not quite sure where that came in the conversation. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm sure Linda will uh, explain that. Um, Mark says, awesome hearing you sharing and love your stories. Thank you, CC. Uh, that which is uh, which is which is pretty cool. Um, I've met you Mark at all. No. <laughs> Hi Mark, sorry I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> we whoever's on here, we all become friends and we all get to know each other. That's right. That's you right. know, that, that that that's the main yes. thing. Absolutely. Um, and if I've missed any comments or any questions, then 
Um, don't worry about it because uh, um, after the show's finished, um, Christine and I will still be chatting afterwards, but we'll go through any questions or comments and we will type those, type in those answers um, to you. Now, um, although time's running on, if, if you've still got time, Christine, and that, um, normally at the end of the show, um, I kind of like either do a mini guide to meditation and angel card reading, or I ask my guest if they'd like to do something. So, Christine, would you like to do a guide, a short, a short guide yes, meditation? Sure. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, so, one of the things that all of all the stuff around Metatron, um, mathematically proved, is exactly the same as Leonardo da Vinci demonstrated with the Vitruvian Man, the man that stands like that is that hmm. this physical body actually follows the laws of Metatron. It is already divine. Uh, so um, a very, very simple thing to do is just to connect to the body. And you're connecting to, it, it will teach you. So I um, invite you to uh, close your eyes. And this is something you can do when you sat at the traffic lights stood at a bus stop waiting for um board an aircraft or whatever you don't need anything to do with this it's so easy and that is the breath that is breathing to focus on that and of course as we focus on it you can sense that the tip of your nose goes cold with the in-breath and that air that's coming in obviously goes to the lungs and let's have a sense that it's breathing in life and it's breathing in love and it's breathing in whatever you want it to breathe in whatever what would you like in this moment to be breathing in and have the idea that that is coming in with the breath so all of that comes with the breath to the lungs. In the lungs, life in the form of oxygen is taken from the air into the bloodstream. So let life and love and whatever you need in this moment to come in with the breath and be picked up by the bloodstream. And let that know that that blood actually goes to every corner of your physical body. I invite you to take a few breaths until you have a full awareness of the whole of the physical body. So your little toe behind your ears, back of the neck, roof of the mouth, elbow, little finger, inside organs so your awareness becomes body shaped and let the stillness of your body and the divinity of your body teach you remind you that you are divine And then allow your eyes to open when you're ready. Very easy. <laughs> that was, and that was absolutely lovely. And it's so centering and fully connecting and just being fully present um, in, in the here and now. And uh, so, so thank you, thank you very, thank you very much for. My pleasure. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for being in touch. And the opportunity. Uh, that that's okay. And we and we will sort of like um well have you back on the show again um in, in the future anyway, because there's so much more we can we can, we, we, we can, yeah, we can, yeah, actually, yeah. We can yeah. actually actually talk about and, and obviously um Christy, don't forget when the show's finished, just stay on and, and we'll um we'll have a yeah, chat yeah. in the green room. Yeah. 
So um, I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom Christine has given you will help you further um, in your life. So if Christine, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Because I know I think you're running something in Egypt in October. Yeah, there's a few things coming up. Um, I'm going to a book launch in, uh, um, I'm doing a Angelic Reiki update in Porto in Portugal in about three weeks. Then doing a Wisdom of Metatron in Italy, um, uh, end of April, just before Easter. Um, then, oh, then it's Mexico and Colombia, and then doing um, a special trip in Egypt based on death, um, starting in the Valley of the Kings. Um, yes, <laughs> but yeah. all of the, all of this information will be put out to the database. Um, but if anyone I, I, is not on the database. Um, but if you go to Angelic Reiki Magic website, there's a contact us button. Yeah, and and um, you can you can find out from Christine around um, everything um, about that, and you can also find um, all the details of uh, those uh, practitioners that actually teach Angelic Reiki, but also um, can can help you with with finding yourself <laughs> and that so not with well, not with healing but with finding your with with finding yourself but you're not lost <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know where you totally where you where you totally are um and a, a quick one okay because because you just mentioned about the um e uh the egypt one and um and, and obviously the value of the kings etc and, and and to the death and that and um, karen has said do you ladies believe in dark night of the soul on the spiritual path absolutely it's normal and natural don't it's avoid bad. it it's tough don't, don't avoid it i yeah. didn't get out of bed for three days <laughs> yeah. that and, and everything oh it, it is it's um yeah thank you for that question it is so important um, and that's part of what we do in the Merkabah workshop. We actually go through the perceived path and how we experience it in everyday life. And um, all ancient wisdom schools absolutely know um, that that, it, that is how it goes. Yeah, yeah, that night of the soul. And to just melt into it, it is such a gift because it, it's, it, it's a reboot. It's actually it, a reboot. Yeah. It, it it is yeah um yeah where when you when you go when you actually delve into it and you and you go into it it is absolutely amazing yeah how you come out of the other side yeah 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 you um, come out with your own truth let go of everything yeah. that everybody else has taught you and you come out with your own truth yeah exactly so karen yeah. to that has added does this occur when healing and spirituality working on oneself if if the if the if one's really honestly treading the path, it is part of the path. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, it's not something that might happen or whatever. It is, it, one has to go through a reboot. Mm. And more than one. Yeah. In different yeah. ways, in different levels, through different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes, you know, with the help and guidance of other people to help you, Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the breakdowns in our spiritual society. Old, you know, old society had the head of the village, had the wise man, had the uh, medicine woman, and they understood this and uh, were there and they'd gone through it. And uh, that's, that's um, yeah, that's the way to look at any therapist um, or healer or whatever as not a healer, not a, not a whatever, uh, it's indeed that's better or got some skills, but just somebody walking along with you. Exactly, Gui guiding you to for, for you yeah. to work on yourself. Yeah, our qualification to say anything that we're saying and to hold this conversation. Our qualification is we've, we've yeah we've got our feet dirty. Yeah, yeah, as 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 as, as everyone is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so thank you everyone so much for watching this and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, their journey, their, their knowing, um, just, just like you. And 
um, for those that know me, you know, I I do angelic Reiki, future life regression, past life regression, hypnosis, meditation, um, angel cards. Um, again, it's being present. I work on, I help you to heal your past, you to create your future, which you do yourself. I just guide you through it. But everything always comes back to bring you back to the present. So once you've got rid of those those past or those future, you'll actually come back to the present. So if you need um, help finding and taking um, charge of um, your, your own self and getting clear, then I would love to be that guide for you. So reach out and connect with me as I would love to book a free 20 to 30 minute session by Skype or Messenger with you to have a quick chat to find out more about each other and whether I can help be that guide for you. And I look forward to you joining me next Wednesday, the 6th of March at 8 p.m., where I'll be talking to my guest, Poggy Hatton. We'll be talking about how her experience with writing music has helped her with healing and its power to help others with their healing and journey. And Poggy will also sing one of her songs for us, which will be absolutely brilliant. So everyone, I will see you then. And as I said, if we haven't managed to get um, onto your your answer any of your questions or anything we will be going back and looking over the questions and we will be commenting on there so thank you everyone for watching and i hope you found this insightful thank you christine so much and okay. I will, and i will see everyone next week so bye bye, -bye.